the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel. You're um, listening to ProBricky, uh, otherwise known as Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist. Um, I don't actively work as a minister anymore. I didn't like it. I don't think I had the call for it. Um, but I was always a bricklayer, so I went back to where I belonged. And um, thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you today. Firstly, um, acknowledge the Anzacs who fought for our country. My granddad was an Anzac in the Royal Australian Navy. Um, I used to love listening to his talks about his experiences in the war. He was there um, for the atomic bomb dropping, which was a horrible phase in human history. Um, they bombed Hiroshima for two weeks straight, the Americans and the Allies off the coast. The Navy bombed it for two weeks straight or something of this nature. Some horrific amount of bombing. And then they were told by the captain or whoever they're person in charge was not to look into the sky at such and such a time and that was the time when the atomic bomb was dropped. Granddad said that they went ashore, I'm not sure exactly what the time lapse was, but he said um, horrific things about what had happened. The shadows of the buildings were seared into the ground. People had run into anywhere they could find water only to be paralyzed by the radiation in the water where they drowned. Skin peeled off. Just horrific, horrible, inhumane consequences of war. He, I spent a lot of my youth as a um, child under the care of my grandparents and um, I can remember my granddad used to scream during the night he'd just go into these nightmares and he lived with that all of his life uh, he was a good man he, he was a good man my granddad he taught me a lot about life because he was a stoker they were very systematic and had systems and he taught me how to have systems and put things back where you get them from and <clears throat> all the little things that matter when later in life but this is probably a story for another day um, but given it's Anzac Day it reminds me of how good a friend my granddad was I'm on my walk now I'm 57 I can remember when I was a little boy Granddad and I used to walk down to the shop to get milk and I couldn't keep up with him, but he never, I think he carried me a few times. Um, but I can remember those walks and it made me strong as a little, little, a very little boy. It made my legs strong and got me on the run. And I owe a lot to my granddad. He was a good man, a good man. He taught me wonderful principles and he was always doing something. And he was a ah, very active man. I can hardly walk my ankle. I got a very bad ankle injury four years ago in an accident. You'll hear me ah, go like that. It's my ankle giving way, but I will walk to do my exercise. So thank you for joining me on the ProBrick exclusive YouTube channel. We are talking about dumping. I know that's a horrible word, but it seems to be the word for the algorithm. Um, and it's something that nobody wants to have to do when you go into a relationship you, by nature, want the relationship to work but that's part of the 
um, expectation. Also, though, you will know from experience, but it's not a guarantee. Usually, um, something's going to happen somewhere along the line, and the ass is going to fall out of things. As yep, quote Granddad used to say, "The ass will fall out of things." Well, hundred percent. My track record is for the ass falling out of relationships one way or another. Um, I'm a pretty tolerant person, uh, but I would do anything, just about, within reason, without losing my identity or um, personality or whatever, you know, who I am, to have a decent relationship. Um, when you get to my age, nearly 60, and you've got all the battle wounds and scars of life, the injuries and the things that life do, do to you, and you're still pushing on, and being a bricklayer, unless you're a bricklayer yourself or something of that nature, people don't understand, really don't understand how heavy and demanding and cruel it is on a daily basis the effort that physical effort that needs to go into it and mental effort as well um, just as you get those bricks in the wall it's hard it's not easy and it takes a tremendous amount of effort on a daily basis you can't turn up and think that you're not gonna have a hard day ahead of you because that's what brick lane is there you going buddy a um, little young bloke walking around at five i don't know what he's going about um and this is one of the sad things about life today as well without getting off track these kids that are growing up in broken families and all this other stuff it's not fair it's usually a consequence of drugs or alcohol or some kind of lust breakdown I think people are getting definitely unsettled with the way life is now you can tell a lot of people are seeking more but few are able to find satisfaction um, and fulfillment uh, a lot of people blame things that have happened to them in life and use that as excuses to justify habits and wrong decision making and time wastedness and you know dysfunction and let me just say love you say you love somebody and all this kind of thing it's not an excuse for dysfunction it's not an excuse for you to just be able to do anything um, uh, that's unhealthy for yourself It takes effort to look after yourself. It takes value of yourself to look after yourself. And you can make decisions now. You should make the decisions now that are gonna help you to be a lot more healthier and happier with your life. Um, so you're in a relationship and you meet this person I can't say that at my age um, I expect too much from people that I meet now um, I've learnt that with all the tag on things that they have and no matter how nice they are or how well they present themselves um, it's going to be difficult to reduce a relationship that's really going to work for everyone there's always something 
and that could be variable things. I uh, remember a girl from school and um, we were always pretty friendly and pally and I took her out for a date. Uh, I think I was in my 40s or something. She was still a good looking sort. And we went to a, she said, well, let's go to this pub. She knew, it. now this is, what they're, this is what they're like. So we go to this pub, local pub. I wasn't into pubs and shit. And the music was playing. I said, well, do you want to have a dance? No, she didn't want to have a dance. And then she disappeared for a while. Now this is how clever and cunning women can be. Not all women, but this is just showing you the mind of how a woman works. So I've got a few birds floating around and don't take much notice of it. So I'm with this other lady. Um, but she disappeared for a little while and uh, women have got a way of spotting you out if you're on your own. And particularly if they've seen you with another woman. That they like that. That gives them a sense of security. It shows them that you know how to manage yourself with the opposite sex and that you must have some attributes because you have somebody with you. Um, and so she comes back and I said, do you want to have a dance? No, she didn't want to have a dance. Do you want to do that? No, no, she wanted this. I said, oh, I think I'm going to go. I, I'm not really enjoying myself and you're not the best company I've ever had. And I left. <clears throat> so she rang me the next day. And she apologised. She said, I'm so sorry about last night. I said, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. I don't really like my time being wasted like that. Um, I don't think I'll go again, whatever you're up to. Um, and thank you for everything. And she said, uh, well, I'm sorry, but last night my ex-boyfriend works at that pub. And I used you as a way of trying to make him jealous. I'm sitting on the phone and I'm thinking, oh, God, this... Yeah, I know female nature and how it works. Um, and she said it worked. And I just wanted to say thank you. I've gone, well, very well, and I'll catch you later. <laughs> That's what women are capable of doing. You've got to understand. You've got to be careful who you think you're getting mixed up with. You'll be used, you'll be... Um, your ability to give good sex will be used as a commodity. Um, I've had relationships where, oh, I love you, I love you, and their behaviour just doesn't line up with the word that they're saying. But it's wonderful when you meet somebody and you see in their own way with what they have left in life because I've dated a lot of older women um, now that I'm in my 60s I'm going to try for a couple of younger ones this time I'd say we'll see but the last woman I had she was she was a good woman she um, tried hard to better herself and I really liked it when things improved for her because that's what you want as a bloke. You want things to improve for your girl and you want to be part of that. And the one thing I can say for the girls that did, didn't make it, and that's most of them, they were not really better off without me doesn't mean they couldn't go on without me or I'm something, you know. If somebody comes into my life, I'm going to be an asset. And if they use that asset correctly, that's great. If they don't, that's their business. They go back to whatever they were doing. And you'll find that women will default. They've had a life long before you come along. And... They have the things that they'll default back into. Can be their children, can be drugs, 
can be medications, can be just some being with themselves. See, a lot of older women come out of miserable long-term relationships where there was no intimacy, they didn't make the effort to embrace that. All of my partners that I've broken off with have had healthy, intimate relations with me. That was never the issue. It was usually some petty, bloody stupid, um, intolerable, unresolved that caused me to ask him to go. And you will find <coughs> that when you meet people, they, and this is where you've got to have discernment and foresight, you, you, you should know that they're going to put on their best behaviour. Excuse me. And then as the thing goes on, you start to see where the weaknesses are and what the capabilities are of um, a healthy relationship, which is few. There's going to be some kind of selfishness or intrusion or disruption or something go on and you've got to make hard and fast choices if you're offering somebody a healthy environment to heal in or to enjoy intimacy in and they're not playing their part on the other side and you're watching this see just because you're in a relationship with somebody doesn't mean you go blind it doesn't mean you're looking for all the mistakes and everything but it doesn't mean you just stand there and go blind you've got to stay on your game and be aware of um, how things are traveling where her psyche's at see everything could be going fine and the next minute she's off with another bloke um, that everything could be going fine and she's off with a woman. Everything could be going fine and she's off with a bloke and a woman. You don't know. You don't know what's around the corner half the time. That may not be the case. She might, things might be going fine and then the children don't like you. And try that one out. I'd rather have a Sheila being banged by somebody else and just breaking the news and try and tolerate interfering children and relatives reason being is oh well you've been banged somebody out by somebody else I'll cop you later with children it can drag on for months trying to sort out what's going to happen that's why dating single mothers is not absolutely not a good idea because you're usually only going to be a convenience no matter how much they say they love you and all the rest of it, and I take nothing away from that, but before you've got interfering children in the background and they haven't got the backbone to straighten it out, you may as well move on, that's for sure. You're just wasting your time. And they're wasting your time without conscience. That's why you've got to constantly be, make, be aware of what's happening to you and around you by the relationship um, and all the other strategies that are required to try and make it work. But as far as dumping is concerned, there is a healthy way of this happening. I'm talking about you dumping the person. And the way I've always operated is I'll right, raise the issue and I'll let the person process it and then I'll watch and see if it's going to be dealt with correctly and in a way in which it's going to benefit the relationship and if it's not then hopefully before um, hopefully before you lose your temper or things get out of sorts you say to that person, I can't do this anymore, or I don't want this relationship anymore, or I'm not interested in this relationship anymore. And they might object, or they might just go, okay, then no problem, and go. 
because what you've got to realise is a lot of people are happy with their unresolved. A lot of people are happy with the relationship they have with their children. A lot of people expect you to work in with that. And if you're not going to, well, they, they'll move on as well. Find someone that will. So this is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison on the Probrick Exclusive Channel. Thank you for joining me, and bye for now.